That's how we going to put a foot in this cracker's ass and bring an end to him on planet Earth with blackmail aggression. His website called War on the Horizon says its purpose is preparing black people for an unavoidable clash with the white race. He says that the war is on now, he is not going anywhere, and that he believes what he is doing is completely okay. Yeah, he uses terms like Uncle Tom Coons, white sex offenders, and Zionist small hats. Shea Bliggity. Hotep Bam, it's your brother Che Black, and I'm back with an exclusive interview with the War on the Horizon's Irritated Genie. Now, unless you just crawled up from under a rock, or you spent the last couple days on Mars, I'm pretty sure you heard about the brother working for DHS, and put him out there on the news, put his government on there. Some brothers in the community even went as far as to say the brother's an agent. Well... Your brother Che Black had to sit down and rap so we could hear his side of the story. We spoke about everything from the situation with his job, the rumors about him being an agent, so-called conscious bootleggers and how they plague in this community, and why he goes so hard on what he's labeled the white sex assault. So sit back, listen, and hear what the brother has to say. It's a very insightful interview. I hope you enjoy it. Peace and black power. been in the news lately? Atlantic Star or Atlantic, one of them Atlantic. Somebody Atlantic. Somebody Atlantic. Atlantic look, that's, they brought us over on the Atlantic, and, right? Yeah, that's how we got here. That's how we got here on the Atlantic. Uh, we had CNN, Fox, Sarah Palin making comments, you know, all this over your job, you know. Pretty much, can you give us an idea of how all of this came about? Um, you know, I can't say too much about the job situation because of course, it's, it's uh, you know a lot of things going on with it, but suffice it to say, uh, I was working for myself for about six years, and uh, ran into the situation and problem where being out here on my own, um, doing lectures for black people, for the black community, try to save our people, books, various other forms of uh, information for our people, got to the point where um, people were out here stealing from us, you know, bootlegging stealing the material and not sharing any of the, the benefits financially with myself. So literally, I mean, I was probably making $60 a, a, a month of videos that might be across the country making three, four $4,000 a month, the feminization of the black male to various people who were stealing and bootlegging them. And so got to a point where I, I couldn't finance the work I was doing. I couldn't even uh, pay rent anymore, not rent, mortgage. So I got to the point where I said, well, I got to go back and get a job, you know, I got to go back and work for the devil, um, but but I, I got to eat, and I'm not, I'm, I don't believe in this, uh, in this poverty, this vow of poverty, and black people who fighting for their race and uh, upliftment, that means that you got to have nothing, I'm not real good with nothing, I, I had nothing my whole life, but my mother never taught me that's how I was supposed to have, she wanted me to have everything, so I believe that we should be comfortable, we should have everything, because we had everything to begin with on this planet, we, we should keep it that way, so I went back, and I uh, went back into the workplace, got back in there, and long story short, a lot of people are probably trying to figure out what, what led to all of this. And uh, some people are thinking, well, they're trying to get the brother. It's not really that big of a conspiracy. Um, I have a job in a place where they like to watch folks. For the, from their perspective, I'm there. What better place for me to be than where they can watch me? So I'm walking the tight wide, making money to feed my family and to keep doing the things I do for my race. And knowing I'm being watched every second, so I'm not going to make any bad decisions. I'm, 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 it helps me walk a, a straighter line because I, you know, I don't break the law. And I'm definitely not going to break the law because I know I'm being looked at. And we just got an evil doing Negro. You know, wherever there's a good African, wherever you got your superhero, you got your super Negro, your, your super villain. Right. And it's just basic super villain like, you know, I'm going to take that mask off you. And he worked his magic. And uh, now, now, now the enemy sees me and put me out before the world. So now the jig is up on that part of the, uh, the battle. <laughs> well, I'm sure everybody who's watching this would know, you know, you work for the Department of Homeland Security. I know you can't speak on the job like that, but it's in the news right now, so I'm, I'm, I'm just relaying what it is already. Now, being that that's your job description, it's a federal uh, uh, job, 
Can you see how people are starting to throw this agent word around? Cause I know you're hearing it. I mean, I, I've heard it. I'm sure you've heard it. You know, they're throwing the word agent around pretty hard. Well, I would say, I mean, I definitely, when you hear the organization and then you hear a black person there, you instantly think, for brothers, let's keep it real. You hear police, you hear police or any kind of police, you think that that's a bad black person. But the reality of it is, you got a job, you got a job. I'm not actually any type of police officer at all. Not, not any type of sworn officer on any level whatsoever. I don't have anything to do with law enforcement. However, I work a job. And uh, I definitely can understand how people hear it. But I'll be honest with you. At this point in time, when it's very clear how the devil is coming after me, if I was an agent, why would they be putting my address and name and stuff on the internet and why would they be saying this is a hate monger and why they want me to lose my job if I'm, <laughs> if I'm an agent working for them <laughs> I don't think they would be surprised to find out what I do <laughs> right 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 okay I, I can definitely I can definitely dig that you know this is going back now a couple of years now I mean I get the idea where I understand you know you had to go back to work now why now and 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 do you have any idea who might even be behind these these attacks? Because obviously somebody is, is is trying to 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 tarnish your name and your reputation. You mean being called an agent? Yes, being called an agent. From from the perspective of the black community, I do. Uh, I actually had an individual working with me on. Uh, sometimes I don't say names when when I get too angry about something. I don't say names, but you know, you know when you when you planning to do something for your folks, mm -hmm. it was like when our ancestors was on a plantation trying to plot to get free. It was always that person you never told because, you know, it's like, don't tell them because they're going to run back and tell Massa. Right. And so here you got a brother that's working the job but by day, but then by night using his finances to try to help his race. And um, I had a guy, I didn't know how to work a radio station, so I found this individual that could. He came on, helped us get it going, got upset over a minor disagreement. It wasn't even a disagreement. It was a really good guy, dialogue. He the one came up with the dialogue. He said, because... We was going to talk about, uh, the, the, it was a movie that came out, uh, Black Women, with uh, the Black Women movie. Um, the Colored, for Colored Girls. Yeah, for Colored Girls, something another. Yeah. And we were like, and then somebody had gotten murdered at that time. And I was like, yo, we need to do a program about this. So he was like, no, nah, it's Thanksgiving. Why don't we do a program with genocide be justice for the white race? And you know me, I'm very tech I was like, that's a good question. That's a fair question. Would it be, would it be? Well, what, for what they've done to the Native Americans, to African people, to Asians, to, to Arabs, or whoever, would it be justice? Would that would, would it be classified justice if somebody said, hey, genocide against the white race? So I thought it was a reasonable thing to talk about. He said it. I didn't deny it. So, of course, I called the king. And uh, king was like, what? So uh, we had a group of people. We sat down and talked about would it be justice. And basically, King Samir just did what he did. You know, the brother just had... You know, very few people can make the irritated genie shut up. I just stopped talking. Because I said, man, he's really making points. I can't even, I can't add and contribute anything to this. I just got to sit back and be a, uh, be a fan. And when it was over, I called up the brother up because he ran the station and everything. I said, look, man, I, I need to get a copy of that. Everybody's been calling me, talking about how King Samir had that thing wrapped it up tight today. And um, he got upset. And he said, I want to go out there and question why King Samir is not locked up. And I said, well, look, man, we can't question my brother. I said, if anything, I work, you know, I work for somebody, you know what I'm saying? So uh, he said, yeah, that's another thing I want to do. I want to do a program on that. I was like, nah, Joe, you're not going to come on my station and question. <laughs> nah, we're not going to be able to do that. So he got mad. Next thing I know, next day he came out. This is who he is, called his job. And I'm sitting there. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Let me, let me just. The, the person. You can say his name. You can say, I just can't say his name. It's on my Gus T. Renegade, man. Yeah, I get it. It's my Gus T. Renegade. Now, you're telling me that this this person, Gus, he actually not only just put your information out there, but was encouraging people to contact your, your, your employer. He told me, call and ask, speak to a supervisor. Tell him what he does, and he out here talking about black people have to fight for their racial survival, and then a lot of whites going to die, whatever, you know, whatever kind of things I tend to say to say to motivate my people to realize we got to defend ourselves. Yeah, he told them to do that, and, 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 and uh, I just, I've never seen anything like that before, so I was so, like, 
I mean, even a dude I don't like, I've been in, you know, beefs, different agreements with bro, but I ain't gonna go to their job and try to get them fired. It's just I like mean, a... We're talking about livelihood now. Brothers just don't do that. You know, brothers do stuff like, they'll jump you after school and stuff. I mean, I, after work. I mean, they'll, 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 they'll do things to you, talk trash behind you back. Uh, but they don't try to make you not have your job. That's just, nah, that's just not how we do it. And so, uh... There's nothing I can say because I, his name is Gusty Renegade and I'm trying to find out who he is. I can't find out. I mean, I, I really try. I mean, I really, just for uh, informational purposes. Right. Like, who is this guy? And no resource I've gone to can tell me who this person really is. So, but anyway, that's not relevant. But the fact is, yeah, he did this and um, and it, it really, really, really bothered me. But it really didn't, nothing I could do. And I expected when it happened that the first thing that would happen would uh, essentially that they would say, you can't. You got to go. Then I, somebody told me, nah, man. They know who you are. They don't want you going anywhere. They said, but look at what the information that you have. Are you more dangerous in a comfortable environment where you get paid, you you focused on doing a the job there, so you, you split your commitment between your race and trying to take care of yourself, or if they put you in the wilderness with the tools you got, you probably don't know half of what you can get accomplished. He said, they'd be fools. He said, he said you're going to be working there. It's, as long as, it, and brother actually said, as long as it never gets out public and eye like that, they're going to watch you like a hawk so they can learn you, study you, know every every move you make. So if you ever did, they thought you were ever going to become a threat, they would know you better than you know yourself. So when he said that to me, then I was extra cautious with how I operate because I said, man, I'm I'm thinking I'm getting over. No, I'm not getting over. They're getting over on me. They're like, yeah, we need to know who we're dealing with out here in this world and what better place to do to have me there. So um, nothing did happen. As a matter of fact, I found out from people that everybody knew, but nobody said anything. I said, man, this is a really sophisticated system. Man, we're talking, this is about two years ago. It's about two, two, two and a half. Two and a half years ago. Maybe three, something like that. Yeah, and I mean, from that time, nobody said a word. But I was finding out, hence here and there, that I knew that a lot of people knew, but no one said anything. And that's when I realized the system works. Because that means everybody has had a quiet agreement, we're going to watch. So here then, I'm thinking I'm operating under disguise. There's no disguise. Everybody's familiar, watching, and they were willing to, to do that quietly. And, and, and what apparently thinking that I don't know that they know who I am. And uh, it worked for everybody in the process, at the, you know, in the beginning. Now, has there ever come a time, being that, you know, you, you have a, a, a job with the government and you're, you're out here doing the work for the people, I mean, that's a tight rope right there. Does it ever feel like like when you're waking up and you're going to work, you ever feel like, man, I'm literally walking into the lion's den every morning? No, and that's why I say that the system works very well. Because because of the maturity and the uh, uh, experience whites have in studying people, movements, organizations, and, 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 and how to manage these things, uh, they make you comfortable. I got comfortable because in my job situation, I'm able to help people. So I get so invested in helping people, I kind of split my life in half. When I go there, no, I'm not doing my race work, but I'm still able to be a decent, committed, just human being. Not African. I'm, I'm able to be a black man that's doing something that's fundamentally good and helping the little guy. I can do that. And I can feel good about that. So it's like a, a fun job because I'm not just going there pushing paper. I'm going in having to sit down and say, okay, how do I help these people that need to be helped get a better shot than the next person? That's something I can enjoy doing. So I count it. And nobody, no, again, even though I know that they watch me, because nobody says anything, I forget. So I have to always remind myself, they know who you are, they know what you're doing. Don't forget that. And it's hard because, you know, you get into the trance of, like, you got everybody fooled, and you, 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 you this race man by night. But about at, at your job, you're just this good person doing this job. But the reality is, everybody looking around you, they know exactly what you do. They probably watching more of your stuff than you are. And uh, it, it is a tight rope, but you get lost to sleep. No issues. You just keep moving. Now, you talking about your race work? Mm -hmm. You know, in your own words, can you describe your race work? What is your race work? Uh, m my job. I feel like. I was born, my ancestors brought me here. Um, and brought me here to eliminate the personality in a black race that wants 
to be friends with our enemies. They brought me here to tell the truth to black people and wake us up to the fact that if we do not stand up and fight for our racial survival, we're going to be exterminated. So that my job is not to be anybody's friend. It's not to be no love duck running around trying to love everybody. It's not to be friendly or political with no devils and no whites and anybody else that's, 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 that's causing problems for African people. My job is to make black people angry about abuse that we suffer, to make us forget about Negroes that came before us and, 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 and was in the middle or definitely in love with white folks to make those who become our heroes make them our, our enemies and those ancestors who we've forgotten like the Honorable Nat Turner and, and Bookmark Duddy and Nanny of Jamaica that we remember them and that we call forth their spirit of rage and anger at the destruction of our race to make us willing to fight for our racial survival. That's my race work to teach black people what's really going on to remove anything in their spirit that will make them resist fighting for their children, for our future, and to have black people say, if somebody decides, which they have, that they're going to kill us, then they're going to now have to reckon with people that are going to be willing to kill them instead. Okay. So, with that somebody, I'm taking it as this white boy is that somebody. I'm saying the white race, mm -hmm. the Arabs invading different parts of Africa, any Asians that think that they're going to be able to continue to come into the black community and just pillage on our people economically like vultures. It really does. Uh, Negroes. Okay, look, I, I'm going to be an equal opportunity employer. These Negro guard dogs for the interests of white supremacy, these, these Petersons, you know, uh, these uh, 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 Hamlins, as, as uh, Dr. Khaled Abdul-Muhammad um, would say, Hamlin with lettuce and tomatoes, you know. <laughs> Uh, the, the, these race trading, Uncle Tom, Negroes, uh, uh, these petty fouls, uh, Eddie Longs, these individuals who are in between us and, our, and, and standing up for ourselves. So when you have black people who are ready to stand up for ourselves, they can go out like they did with our brother Trayvon Martin, and they can go into Sanford County and get all the Negro preachers and say, look, tell your people not to write it. Then, then they can wait. One sister called the radio program and said, you understand what they did. Sister Yaya said, they waited till Saturday night to announce the verdict because they had already talked to the Negro preachers and they knew the black people was going to get up to get their instructions of what to do when the verdict came out from Saturday night. Sunday morning they were going to the church and they already had the church Negro preachers, the slave preachers, the Jesus lovers, prepared to go ahead and tell them, our people, they killed our son, don't do nothing. Give them, give them permission to kill more of our children. That's exactly what those Negroes did. They told our people to let it go and be comfortable with the murder of our children. And now we can expect that whites now have the thumbs up from, 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 from these Negro leadership, this pleadership, these beggars, and the, 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 these guard dogs for the system of white supremacy that kills us. Now they got permission to kill our babies. So as opposed to getting consequences for doing it, and then whites saying, well, we just can't go around killing their babies. Now his parents... The attorneys, uh, uh, the Negro preachers, and the, the leaders, not the people. The people would have responded if the mother would have said it like she wanted a response. If the father would have been a real man and, and said he wanted a response for his son's murder. But they didn't. And they now telling whites, it's okay, kill the babies. It's okay because nobody's going to do it. might be across the country making three, four thousand dollars a month, the feminization of the black male to various people who were stealing and bootlegging them. And so got to a point where I, I couldn't finance the work I was doing. I couldn't even uh, pay rent anymore, not rent, mortgage. So I got to the point where I said, well, I got to go back and get a job, you know. I got to go back and work for the devil. Um, but but I, I got to eat. And I'm not, I'm, I don't believe in this, uh, in this poverty, this vow of poverty and black people who fighting for their race and uh, upliftment. That means that you got to have nothing. I'm not real good with nothing. I, I had nothing my whole life, but my mother never told me that's how I was supposed to have. She wanted me to have everything. So I believe that we should be comfortable. We should have everything because we had everything to begin with on this planet. We, we should keep it that way. So I went back and I uh, went back into the workplace. That's how we going to put a foot 
in this cracker's ass and bring an end to him on planet Earth with black male aggression. His website called War on the Horizon says its purpose is preparing black people for an unavoidable clash with the white race. He says that the war is on now, he is not going anywhere, and that he believes what he is doing is completely okay. Yeah, he uses terms like Uncle Tom Coons, white sex offenders, and Zionist small hats. Shay Bliggity, Hotep Bam, it's your brother Shay Black, and I'm back with an exclusive interview with the War on the Horizon's irritated genie. Now, unless you just crawled up from under a rock, or you spent the last couple days on Mars, I'm pretty sure you heard about the brother working for DHS. They put him out there on the news, put his government on there. Some brothers in the community even went as far as to say the brother's an agent. Well, your brother Che Black had to sit down and rap so we could hear his side of the story. We spoke about everything from the situation with his job, the rumors about him being an agent, so-called conscious bootleggers and how they plague in this community, and why he goes so hard on what he's labeled the white sex assault. So sit back, listen, and hear what the brother has to say. It's a very insightful interview. I hope you enjoy it. Peace and black power. Peace. It's your brother Shay Black with the Rise of Truth. And I'm here with a very special guest. War on the Horizons, irritated genie of Southeast. Peace, brother. Good to be got with. Well, brother, you've been in the news lately. Atlantic. Star or Atlantic, one of them Atlantic. Somebody Atlantic. Somebody Atlantic. Atlantic look, that's, they brought us over on the Atlantic, yeah, right? Yeah, that's how we got here. That's how Atlantic. we got here on the Atlantic. Uh, we had CNN, Fox, Sarah Palin making comments, you know. All this over your job, you know. Pretty much, can you give us an idea of how all of this came about? Um, you know, I can't say too much about the job situation because, of course, it's, it's uh, you know, a lot of things going on with it. But suffice it to say, uh, I was working for myself for about six years and uh, ran into the situation and problem where being out here on my own um, doing lectures for black people, for the black community to try to save our people, books, various other forms of uh, information for our people, got to the point where um, people were out here stealing from us, you know, bootlegging, stealing the material and not sharing any of the the benefits financially with myself so literally I mean I was probably making sixty dollars a, a month off videos that 